Hello, Internet. My name is Marie. Welcome to another documentary from Planet Pender. There will be a documentary of Eric Robles, who is the creator of Fanboy and Chum Chum and Glitch Text, but we will talk about that in another time. It's all about a guy from a special uncle to Bugs Bunny. It's Peter Browngart. Peter Browngart is an American animator, storyboard artist, writer, voice actor, and producer. Peter, who grew up the youngest in a large family of eight children, his eldest brothers were very creative and filmmakers. It begins his days at Pearson Middle School, where he survived the tedium of the classroom by doodling. He gets in a lot of trouble for doodling in his notebooks. Brown Gart says he was so completely focused, he began making 8mm films as a child, shooting stop motion shorts in his basement or using the homemade animation table, which he built himself. But when it's time for college, Brown Gart's top choice was California Institute of the Arts. And he got in. He believes it thanks to the opportunities he received while still a student in Pearson. That was impressive when he was there at an early age. After he graduated Cal Arts, he began his career of Futurama, The Last American, Chowder, The Marvelous Misadventures of Flapjack, Adventure Time, Augu Blick Studios, MTV, and many more. Browngart's work on the Lattermost series began when C.H. Greenblatt, the creator of Chowder, looked through one of his pitch Bibles that he left at the studio. The concept was an uncle and a grandpa in one person. In 2006, Pete pitched a cartoon on Cartoon Network, which later was produced in 2008, then aired online in 2009 on Cartoon Network Video as part of the Cartoon Institute. The name is Uncle Grandpa. The style of the show was inspired by Pete's love of comics, Mad Magazine. Warner Brothers cartoons, and watching Looney Tunes and Tex Every cartoons. Uncle Grandpa, based upon the various and often uncommon relatives who often drop by and visit them, as well aspects of his own personality. Uncle Grandpa was a successful pilot, but at the time, CN executives weren't sure about having a series centered on the title character, and felt the monster characters from the pilot had more potential. Character designer Robert Tran Corey and David P. Smith, a director and storyboard artist on Dexter's Laboratory and the Powerpuff Girls, were brought on board to help shape the project's development. On August 1, 2011, Secret Mountain for Awesome was released on Cartoon Network, a comedy show about five monsters known as the Disgustoids are banished from society due to their rowdy behavior and butt-ugly appearances. From their sentiment and imponious mountain fort, they unleash insane stunts on the public eye. Their tusk creature leader, Festro, voiced by Peter Browngart, is a macho party animal willing to do anything to help out his group. Even his help is less than desired. Dingo, also voiced by Pete, a thin blue creature acts as their faithful pet and only intelligible to the group. Slog, voiced by Steve Little, a black furred monster, is blindly loyal but no critical judgment skills. Gweelock, voiced by Paul Rog, a green ball with acne, has the many attitude and obsessed with technology. And the Fart, voiced by Pat Duke, a sensitive and level-headed buttock monster who flatulates when touch. Oh boy, these monsters look hideous, but Festro looks fine. I've seen the show before, but only a few of them because I wasn't interested in all of them. Except the crossover, where I'll mention it later. The composer of the show was Mike Conti of the heavy metal band Early Man. In an interview with Cartoon Brew, Pete called the process of pitching his pilot an amazing learning experience because it allowed him to propose an idea to the network and see how it can manipulate and change while you are working on it. Pete was inspired by the Garbage Pail Kids and Don Martin of Mad Magazine. 
but called the result definitely his own thing. Also, it was a tight schedule with the time and their battles of the network. Referring to his rendezvous with the network regarding content, Brown got to let go and find the right balance as well as to ask himself, is my grandma going to notice this? The reception, the show was considered well received by some critics, but mostly negative from the character designs and the art style with the limited animation. However, it won awards for Outstanding Individual in Animation at the 64th Primetime Emmy Awards ceremony. Thanks to Nightmare Sauce that gave them many awards. SMFA has two seasons, 26 episodes, 11 minutes, and 42 segments. It even has certain episodes with the same title of the show, except Fort Awesome was altered as Secret Mountain Uncle Grandpa, for example. On February 17, 2012, the show was yanked from broadcast for some reason and put on hiatus. Then the remaining eight episodes were released on iTunes from March 8th to 29th, 2012. The show was canceled after that. I don't get that CN weren't sure that Uncle Grandpa would get a series because of the title character before 2013. Like, come on, Chowder and Flatjack, for instance, get a show from their names. I guess the design of Uncle Grandpa? Who knows? After SFMA was panned by critics, Peter decided to bring Uncle Grandpa back, but this time was a full-fledged TV series. He said it's more lighthearted to the children. He expressed that he wanted more variety in the music and able to go sort of a happier place, though it goes dark and heavy at times. A pilot, then a spin-off about monsters, and a grandpa is another spin-off from the previous spin-off. Confusing, I know. Uncle Grandpa was a surreal action-adventure comedy that relies on visual gags and catchphrases. Pete has cited the work of cartoonists as Don Martin, Gary Larson, and Robert Crumb, as well as Golden Age era animators such as Tex Avery and Max Flesher when it came to developing the style of the series. The editor of the show was his older brother, Tom Browngard. Plus is that Uncle Grandpa was redesigned by John Krafowski, who created Ren and Stimpy. Yeah, that guy. On July 27th and 28th of 2013, Cartoon Network aired a sneak peek for the part of Big Fan Weekend, followed by Clarence and Stevie Universe. Eventually, the show was released on September 2nd, 2013. Uncle Grandpa, voiced by Peter, once again. A magical shape-shifting humanoid sometimes eats edible objects, stopping by every children's houses daily to see how they are doing. The children he visits have situations of their own, and it's up to Uncle Grandpa to help them from the bizarre and surreal adventures. His catchphrase is, Good morning. Good morning. He is every uncle and grandpa in the entire world. Also in video games. Basically like Santa. His clowning appearance is unsophisticated, but is well-meaning, supportive, and fun-loving. As for the vehicle, he lives in, and drive in a UG2000 model robotic RV known as the Perpetual Persistence. And his friends, Belly Bag, originally Fanny Pack, voiced by Paul Rugg, and the TV series by Eric Bauza a cyborg fanny pack who has lots of items, weapons, and dimensions inside of him. Mr. Gus, voiced by Kevin Michael Richardson. A grumpy, serious dinosaur Roy, who used to be a rival of Grandpa's in Leg Wrestle, but later became his friend and bodyguard. Pizza Steve, an anthropomorphic pizza slice, voiced by Ed and Divine, who is troublesome and always brags about how cool he is and giant realistic flying tiger. A cutout photo of a tiger. She is a pet to uncle and has a teenage girl, house cat, and tiger-like personality. And the episodes is 11 minutes long with a unique format. 
It involves the main events of the show, shorts of quick visual jokes, and segments of positive, very nice, and negative hot dog person trying new things in life. But hot dog ended up getting the pain while Barry doesn't care. Uncle Grandpa was a popular show, like the others in the era of 2010s, and has a cult following. So much so, it has 5 seasons and 153 episodes, making the longest series of peak projects. It has video games, DVD releases, comics, and won Primetime Emmy Awards for Outstanding Animation of Afraid of the Dark episode. The international release was in India, Canada, United Kingdom, Ireland, Australia, and in the Middle East of Arabic. Just the same as SFMA, it receives positive, mixed, and negative reviews of the surreal and weirdness that people say. The specials, a Christmas special where Santa was Yuji's brother, guest directed shorts from the likes of M. Martella, Pendleton Ward, and Max Winston, Cartoon Network Crossover Nexus, and The Return of Festro. Uncle Grandpa Babies, this is the big one. Say Uncle was a crossover to Steven Universe that has 1.926 views in 2015. The show writer, Matt Burnett, said it was canon, but turned out to be an April Fool's joke. Rebecca Sugar made the idea of Uncle Grandpa going to the Steven Universe universe. It has praise and negative because UG is more weird than Steven for SU fans. On June 30th, 2017, Uncle Grandpa was cancelled. A show like Uncle Grandpa was one of my favorite shows with interesting characters. As for the UG character, who was like the Santa of all of us. Also, outmost jokes and catchphrase and funny moments. Mostly, Good morning! Good morning! My personal favorite was the Different Animators episode. Farewell, Uncle Grandpa. It was fun while it lasted. When Peter finished Uncle Grandpa, he met with Audrey Dehe, the creative director at Warner Bros. at a lunch meeting. She mentions that he wasn't interested in. Eventually, he talked about what he was interested in. Pete said, you know, what I really want to do is to direct a Looney Tunes short. Audrey was surprised that he enjoys Looney Tunes. Well, he has been a huge fan of Looney Tunes for a long time. She got him a rendezvous with Sam Register, the creator of Hi Hi Puffy and Yummy. Pete wanted to be like the classic 40s cartoons, so he planned a cast like Balza and was a fan of Jim Sopper's art, so he hired him as a character designer. It even has all characters from the original series and returning obscure characters. In 2018, the initial designs of the new Looney Tunes cartoons were previewed in WB Animation logo that was first shown before Teen Titans go to the movies. When 2020 arrived, Looney Tunes cartoons was animated by being outsourced to different animation studios. Studios like Yowza Animation, with the apps of Toon Boom Harmony, and other studios like Yarim Productions, Simple Animation, and Tonic DNA to animate the shorts in the 40s fashion. Trailer after trailer for WB Kids, it was released on May 27th in the new streaming app, HBO Max. The producers include copious amounts of cartoon violence and Acme Corporation weaponry, but get rid of any firearm range weapons of Elmer Fudd, who now uses a sight and other weapons to hunt Bugs Bunny. It did gain controversy. That's strange that people back then, that gun seemed fine, but today in the mainstream era seems so sensitive. I guess kids today can't handle it. Oh well, I guess it's not 100% 40-ish, just 90%. Looney Tunes cartoons received lots of positive reviews from critics of Rotten Tomatoes, Metacritic, and longtime fans of the show. It was the true spirit reboot of the original that was way better than the other ones. 
in Canada. The series will air on Teletoon October of the same year. To end the document, the experience I had with Pete Works was a really crazy ride for me from his Uncle Grandpa series and specials of what he had done. As for SMFA, I found the least favorite and mediocre because of the fact is a little try hard to the designs and visuals. But at least UG and Looney Tunes make that up from that. I'll probably watch the Looney Tunes cartoons eventually if we had HBO Max. With that out of the way, I end it here. Follow me on Twitter for updates and artworks. It's Marie from Pender, and see you next time.